at last the new book is out. It's taken about a, a year and four months to write. It's been written in collaboration with uh, the right people within Southern Africa in the Envenomation space. Now the book offers a, a new and innovative first response framework that's, that's based on the local science. It's easy to understand and put into practice. It's going to reduce the burden of scorpion stings across Southern Africa by answering two very important questions. The first question is, how can you reduce the chance of being stung by a scorpion? And there are things that we can do. And the second question is, if a scorpion sting does occur, how can you ensure the best possible outcome for stings in humans and also animals? This book is going to be particularly valuable to anyone who lives in high risk areas where scorpions abound. Uh, pet owners, wildlife rehabilitation centers, and volunteers who work in the environmental space. Um, it's particularly of interest to medical professionals and veterinarians as it offers an understanding of scorpions that really complements their medical training. So let's have a look inside and see what we have. It's 182 pages. Okay, if you go to the contents, you'll see it's four sections. There's an introduction, which is about roles and responsibilities. I've defined um, unique terminology, uh, and I think it's important to get the terminology right when we're talking about scorpion sting first response. It just kind of sets the scene for the rest of the, you know, for the rest of the book. Then there's our relationship with scorpions, and it's interesting how people who are afraid of scorpions or who have negative connotations towards them are more likely to believe in misinformation and apply harmful first aid techniques. Then we've got a section on scorpions and scorpion stings. And on the last bit, effective first response is putting all of this into practice in a very practical way. So let's just flick through the book and see what it includes. What I've done, I've tried to illustrate concepts in innovative ways that are easy to understand. Um, so we've got the introduction. Uh, terminology is coming up, so there's roles and responsibilities here, uh, terminologies, uh, and how we need to change the way that we describe scorpion sting. I've used these classes, which is a brand new concept which I've introduced in the book, and these classes of symptoms help us understand first response and clarify symptoms experienced by the patient. There's our relationship with scorpions. Uh, da, 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 da. Should we be afraid? That's a very good question. The answer is no, we shouldn't. And perceptions versus reality is very interesting. People have this idea of how we get stung by scorpions and their idea and how people actually get stung by scorpions is completely different. And there's some lessons that we can learn from that. Is it dangerous? That's a question I get asked on a daily basis. Uh, well, the answer's there. Scorpions and scorpion stings, introduction, then identification. The book focuses on scorpions from a venomosity rule of thumb point of view, except for the high risk species. We've got distributions here. So where do they occur? Where do they shelter? And this is a good example of how to illustrate a concept in an interesting way. It's general activity, behavior, responding to threats. You know, why do they sting people? That's a good question to ask. Uh, there's another example. And then we get into venom, and this is a great section on venom. I think it's the best section I've ever read. Uh, and it goes into the depths of scorpion venom and the toxins that are involved in it, included uh, defense mechanisms or defense venoms and prey capture venoms. What's the difference? A bit about anti venom, it's a bit of a hot topic nowadays. Uh, how to find scorpions at night, so a bit about UV torches if you need to find a scorpion. And then we get onto the venomosity rule of thumb. So we've got highly venomous scorpions here, we've got moderately venomous, and we've got weakly venomous. And we have to remember that these different groups don't dictate the outcome of a sting. They do influence it, but there's other factors which influence symptom severity. So here we have the high risk species. These are the ones that cause deaths within Southern Africa and often require anti-venom to treat their stings. There's the three scorpions with some really nice distribution maps. And we've got a list of other species that are potentially high risk. 
high risk areas with a map and these areas are in inhabited by large species of highly venomous scorpions. And then we've got how does the scorpion venom get absorbed into our physiology? And this just explains time frames between immediate symptoms and also delayed symptoms. So that's pretty important. Location of scorpion stings in animals and also humans. Then we've got scorpion stings in dogs and cats. Uh, there's a bit about wild animals there as well. And then we get into the symptoms. And you'll see that I've split the symptoms up into the different classes. Once again, these classes really help us understand scorpion sting first response. And I think it's a, it's a, it's a brand new way to, to kind of look at symptoms. And I think it works very, very well. Scorpion sting misdiagnosis, very important. Very few people watch the scorpion sting them. Factors influencing symptom severity. There's four different groups of factors. Here we go. An example of how the factors interact with the scorpion sting. Red flags are very important, especially when it's a high risk person who's been stung. The role of complementary medicine uh, and alternative uh, medicine. Uh, emergency response plan is there. And then the last section, essential first response, uses a, there's a very nice flow diagram. And this goes through exactly step by step of how you need to respond to a scorpion sting. And here we've got all the steps. It really puts the rest of the book together and puts it in perspective and applies it in a very practical way that's easy to understand. Then just kind of aiming off, uh, kind of ending off here, we've got a uh, retrospective degree, uh, review, you know, where to get advice. Uh, and the last bit is going to be closing thoughts. So the book is really going to change, change the way that we treat scorpion stings in Southern Africa. I'm super pleased at the, um, what it looks like. At the end result is absolutely fantastic. Uh, if you want to find out more about the book, then please go to www.scorpions.co.za and click on the link and have a look at the preview.